And I will tell you this, if you look at one year at a time and only focus on one year, that's a good strategy. Oh, I don't have to pay tax this year. But if you look at the next 20, 30, 40 years, this is a horrible strategy. Hi, Andy, Joe, and Big Al. Sorry, this is a bit long. I also attached a PDF in case the email blows up. Anytime you got to send a PDF, Jim, <laughs> it's a little too long. Just FYI, high. it's a little too long, <laughs> just a little rich. All right. All right. I'm going to bust through this as fast as I possibly can. Okay. And still give good, good answers. Th- yeah. Or, or great, good, good great, spitball. Great spitball. He's going to uh, use his superpowers uh, today. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah, we will. Dear Joe, Big Alan, Andy, I'm a relatively new listener and love the show. Okay, well, now you know not to send us a <laughs> novel. Uh, the weekly podcast makes the drive to work in Chicago highways a learning experience and enjoy the humor as well. Great information. Looking forward to a future episodes. I'm nearing retirement and have had several portfolio reviews in the last year. Each opinion offered different views regarding RMD insurance and investment vehicles. Spend down strategies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Given the conflicting info, I'm wondering if you could give me a spitball assessment on the following questions. Yeah. So he's actually going to other advisors, yep. paying them and getting different <laughs> advice. And then he's like, well, you know what? I should send a PDF file. <laughs> <laughs> that is so large that can barely get through the internet airwaves. <laughs> so Joe and big Al can spitball this for him. Okay, well, we'll give it our best shot. All right. Well, we have RMD tax issue. As the advisor insurance agent states, based on their Monte Carlo simulation, some say we will, others no. In the last two years, I converted $60,000 annually annually to Roth from deferred, keeping us in the 22% tax bracket and below the IRMA threshold. Some say convert up to 24% or 330 to knock down the RMD threat and just pay the Medicare upcharge. Okay, no idea, Jim. I he did no say clue. his financials are at the very end of the question, oh, so you'd you have to go to the next the question. Jim. Jim, I know you're a new listener. You start there. Okay, we'll we'll put a pin on that one. Come back. Okay, I insurance. Okay, they say rather than Roth conversions, use withdrawal tax to fund life insurance, which will act like a bond percentage of your portfolio while instantly providing a million dollars in coverage plus increasing cash value guaranteed 2 to 3% per year. Yikes. Yeah, get rid of that. That's, that's, a, that's a strategy, but uh, Roth would provide tax-free gains, but no coverage. Additionally, the insurance would not be subject to the stretch 10-year payout rules. Yeah, because it's paid out 100% in year one. Yeah, the, there are advisors that recommend that, and typically they're the ones that make commissions Correct. on that product. Okay, considering our situation, what is a good spend-down strategy? Some say use the taxable investment, brokerage account first, then Roth, because there isn't any tax burden. We will pass the five-year test, then tax deferred last. So what spend-down looks good for us? Or might one strategy work until 70 and shift to another? I'm assuming our EGI and tax rates will be more in retirement. Okay. So, Jim, your spend down strategy is not non qualified, then your RMD, and then tax free. The whole purpose of doing conversions and getting yourself diversified from a tax perspective is that you probably want a blend of all to keep yourself in the lowest tax bracket possible. Because what happens when you take from, let's say, your brokerage account that's taxed at a capital gains first. So you're taking that money out and letting your deferred continue to grow. And then all of a sudden you have RMDs, you're out of taxable investments in most cases. And then so most of your income is going to be taxed from the retirement account that's all ordinary. So you want to be a little bit smarter. I mean, you're getting rules of thumb and product pitches from these advisors. And I don't even know your situation. Yet. Well, and I will say th- th- that's a common recommendation. Yeah, and, very much and, so. And I will tell you this, if you look at one year at a time and only focus on one year, that's a good strategy. Oh, I don't have to pay tax this year. But if you look at the next 20, 30, 40 years, this is a horrible strategy. You got to look at all these tax years in at one time to figure out the best strategy. Because here's the big mistake is you have no taxes, right? You have no income, very little income. Maybe you have a, a standard deduction, maybe you have negative taxable income, right? So you pay no tax for five years, whatever. And then all of a sudden, 
when you have to start pulling out of your deferred accounts, now you're in a higher tax bracket. You're much better off making those level by doing Roth conversions. All right. Number four, lastly, <clears throat> I always figured we are going to be okay with what we've saved, but inflation, taxes, and at certain returns now have me questioning about that and not allowing ourselves to enjoy the savings. So is it gloom and doom? Will we have enough? Can we manage what we have more effectively for taxes? Can I relax a bit? That's all underlined. Yeah, that's the big question of the <laughs> that's day. A, that's a big question. That's the only question underlined. Yes. Yep. All right. So now, now do we get to the meat? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Here we go. My wife will be 66 this year and currently draws Social Security, and I'll be 64, planning to work until 65, longer or part-time as needed. And wait until 70 for my Social Security. At 70, we expect to earn $40,000 a year gross with $35,000 net from Social Security. I currently earn $75,000 a year gross, and my wife $26,000, or $26,000, I'm sorry, a year gross. Of that, we average $78,000 take home or $6,500 a month. Unfortunately, our expenses typically exceed that amount by about $1,500 a month due to home improvements, making our annual needs, etc. Our total investments include tax deferred 401ks and IRAs of $2.7 million, Roth IRAs of $354, and brokerage account of $200,000, mostly money market. The latter I tap to make up the shortfall when we overspend the income and if <clears throat> and it was how I was going to pay myself from 65 to 70. We still have a mortgage at 3.6% for another 20 years. So I did the math spreadsheet. I hope it's right. My assumption formulas include 2.5% inflation of 5% return and the Roth and tax deferred accounts. The brokerage account, which is our emergency fund, slowly erodes with inflation. The math is all based on my age and joint balances show. Our annual expenses climbing from current $96,000 a year to 120 age 70 to $150,000 a year at, at age 82 and 200,000 at 92 pays down two and a half percent inflation. Our max RMD will hit $154,000. We will come at age 89 and our balances will be $1.7 million tax deferred, 660 in Roth at brokerage, 117 um, in brokerage. I'm sorry. This is all based on RMD withdrawals only, not withdrawals to help us get by. Maybe the spitball will show how, where to fund the shortfalls so the above figures are a starting point. Maybe the max RMD coupled with our Social Security income will never really face huge tax bills as the buckets get adjusted, et cetera. Appreciate the efforts in your weekly banter. Agree that the review compensation committee, that's you, Big Al, should give Andy, she's great, a well-deserved increase. Look at this guy. Yeah, that was what episode was that? Oh, 396, 396 <laughs> 27 minutes in. <laughs> I drive a 2017 Nissan Titan and I've been known to suck down a frosty Sierra Nevada atomic torpedo. Double IPA. Oh, uh, that's a serious beer. Yeah, on the patio <laughs> while throwing the ball to our three year old golden retriever, Thor. Thanks again, Jim. All right, very cool. Thanks, Jim, for the question. Appreciate you writing the novel. All right, Jim, first thing you got to do is add up your assets just to make sure that you can retire. Yeah, so I get about $3.2 All right, so you got $3.2 in total assets. And then you want to spend roughly, what, $100,000 a year? Yeah, he says ninety six, whatever. Okay, minus the 26000 from his wife's Social Security? Yeah, so you need about 70000 from the portfolio. Okay. So he's making that right now as an income, but when he retires, that income is going to go away. And now he needs to start taking dollars from the overall portfolio. Correct. So you take your shortfall. Maybe it's higher some years. Maybe you want to spend 150 one year because you want to go on more vacations. You got more home improvements. Some years you might spend 80, right? But this is a rule of thumb just to make sure that you're kind of on track. So the first step is to add up all of your assets, look at what you're spending minus the fixed income that's coming in and find your shortfall. So the shortfall is 75,000. You divide the 75,000, that's the shortfall that needs to come from your portfolio into the total portfolio, which is what percentage? Yeah, call it 3.2 3 million. Let's call it 2.2, 2.3%. Okay. So off the cuff, you're looking at, all right, hey, this looks okay. You're about three under 3%. 
now you could probably do this. Yeah. And at age 65 and 66, let's see, let's see, he'll be 64. Not sure about his wife. A wife will be 66 this year. You could probably do 4% distribution rate. And so you're you're fine. You got you got cushion here. So from a cash flow perspective, are you overreacting? Not necessarily because you're close, right? We 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 have volatile stock market. If the market drops quite a bit and you're pulling money from the overall accounts and you don't necessarily have a strategy, I can see why you're meeting with hundreds of advisors and writing us novels. <laughs> yeah, something else to consider is we often say four percent is a good distribution rate at age 65 when you're retiring. But that's prefaced on you staying invested, and so some people think oh, I can just take four percent out of my savings account. No, that's that would that would be predicated on a sixty percent stock, forty percent bonds. You know, just if you're trying to have the most the greatest chance of success. But but you're always uh, you always have to be conscious of the market is not always predictable. So so you have to have some built in cushions here. Yeah, and he's super close. I mean, he could blow this thing up wide open, make a couple of mistakes, and yeah, I can see why there's some anxiety there because right. y- you have a paycheck now. Now you got to replace the paycheck with your overall investments. Do you have enough? We think yeah, you're pretty close. Second step then is to look at how are you going to create the retirement income long term and what is the tax liability going to be on that retirement income? Because if you can save money in taxes, then that money going to, is going to continue to stretch for you. Correct. Yeah. So then he starts talking to advisors to say, all right, well, I got $2.7 million in this retirement account. Should I be looking at Roth conversions? And the answer is probably yes, but you don't have a lot of liquidity to eat one, pay the tax, and to two, live off of as you're converting. So when you look at 2.7, Alan, and he's six, 64 years old. Yep. So let's just fast forward 10 years. So let's say this 3 million is five and a half. Yeah, or even five, just to make it simple. Okay. So your required distribution at 72 is going to be $200,000. Right. He's going to have about fifty, sixty thousand dollars combined of fixed income. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, his thirty-five to thirty, twenty-six. Yeah, yeah, about about sixty. Okay, but that's not including the distributions that he's taking along the way because sure. he needs to live off of this yeah. over the next ten years. So it's going to be a little bit lower. Probably. So let's call it four million. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Good enough. All right. So 160,000 plus that, let's call his his taxable income is going to be roughly 200 grand. Yeah, 200 minus standard deduction. So at 200,000 or anywhere between 180 and 220 is going to be where he's going to fall. Yeah. As a married filing couple, what tax bracket will he be in? Yeah, that's 24%. So that's why you're getting the advice to convert to the 24% because the 24% will turn to 28%. Potentially, you could fall into alternative minimum tax and so on and so forth. So you're buying the tax cheap today. But I don't know if he needs to go full bore all the way up to the 24% tax bracket because the 24% tax bracket is huge. It is huge. It, it goes up to over $340,000 for 2022. And the thing is that you have to look at your cash flow. Just like you said, Joe, there's only a couple hundred thousand to pay the tax and have cushion to live off of. Right. So anyway, you have to be sensible with all these things together. So you would want to look at, yeah, is that yes, conversions make sense, but it's not like go to the top of the 24, because if he converts up to 300,000, right, right yeah. over the next several years, his RMD might be very little. And all of a sudden now he's in the 15% tax bracket Yeah, that's and you pay point. tax at 24 when you're in the 15. So there's a a balancing act here. You have to run some tax projections. You have to look at the numbers. The person that recommended you taking money out of your retirement account and buying life insurance is out of their mind, given how much money that you have. If you had $15 million, then I would say, sure. Like the other dude that had $11 million with $200,000 in pensions that spends like 30 cents a day. Right. (laughs) <laughs> yes, he's going to have a huge tax problem, but he's right at 4% or three and a half or, or at 3%, I should say. That's right. That's not including tax. So I don't know if you want to give your cash flow away to a life insurance contract that, yeah, the, the, the death benefit is going to go tax free to the heirs, but that money's gone. 
you might need it for long-term care. You might need it for additional expenses. There's there's all sorts of different things. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I would not do that myself. So will you have an RMD tax issue? Potentially. Should you buy insurance? No. Um, would it be, what's the proper spend down? We talked about, you have to have a better strategy than just non-qualified qualify Roth. Yeah. What you're trying to do is level out the tax, the, the, the tax rate over time, not just have low and then spike. You want to even it out. You'll end up paying a lot less tax over time. And then finally, uh, is he freaking out? No, you're not gloom and doom. I would say doom and gloom, not gloom and doom. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me. But Got it. Okay. Very good. I, I think he's okay. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of planning that he needs to do and implement and execution is going to be key. So a first, find a fiduciary that's not selling product, Correct. find a certified financial planner and a CPA that you can trust and work with, or do this yourself. Continue to, you know, get the free assessments and analysis all over the place. And then finally figure out the strategy. The biggest thing is that now he's got to create the income from the portfolio and he's got to be disciplined and consistent with the overall strategy as things will change in the market, things will change in tax codes, things will change in his life. And he's got to be able to change with that. That's where most people blow up. And that's where most people fail is that they're not dynamic or they're too dynamic, right? They're like, then they, they freak out when the market turns and then they stop the strategy or they pause or they get out of the markets or they stop doing the tax strategy. When, when markets are down, that could be the best time to do the tax strategies. Yep. So I think we got it. Are you prepared for retirement? Schedule a free financial assessment with an experienced financial professional right online at purefinancial.com.